Glucose sensors. What is a glucose sensor? A glucose sensor essentially measures the amount of glucose in your body. There are two types of glucose sensors, blood glucose meters, also called a glucometer, and continuous glucose monitors. BG meters measure a snapshot of your glucose, giving you a fixed number at one point in time. A CGM measures the glucose levels periodically, often every five minutes. Along with the current level, we can also identify which direction the glucose is going and how fast it is going in that direction. You essentially get a story of the glucose in your body. Why a glucose sensor? Glucose sensors are great for people with diabetes. It allows them to live more carefree and not worry if their glucose levels are in the required range. It also allows doctors to make better treatment decisions. Athletes can also track how their diet and exercise affect their glucose levels and performance. So how do glucose sensors work? Glucose sensors are essentially biosensors, and biosensors are a device that use a living organism or biological molecule to detect the presence of chemicals. Biosensors have several components. First, we have an analyte, which is the substance we are trying to measure, in our case glucose. Then we have a bioreceptor, which is the molecule that specifically recognizes the analyte. Next, there is a transducer, which converts one form of energy into another. In the past, we used a colorimetric process that was measured optically, but modern devices use electrochemical sensors. More specifically, they use amperometric type sensors, which monitor currents when electrons are exchanged between a biological system and an electrode. Finally, the electronics process the transduced signal and prepares it for the display, and the display generates numbers or curves understandable by the user. Now looking at the bioreceptor in more detail, the most common type of bioreceptors are enzyme-based. Glucose biosensors are usually based on two enzyme families, glucose oxidase, GOX, and glucose dehydrogenase, GDH. These enzymes differ in redox potentials, cofactors, and selectivity for glucose. The GOX enzyme is commercially produced from a fungus and a mold through a solid-state fermentation. Now looking at the reaction sequence for GOX, we see that GOX catalyzes the oxidation of glucose by oxygen, producing gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide. In order to work as a catalyst though, GOX requires a redox cofactor, FAD. FAD works as the initial electron acceptor and is reduced to FADH2. The cofactor is then regenerated by reacting with oxygen, leading to the formation of hydrogen peroxides. Finally, hydrogen peroxide is then oxidized at the anode. The electrode easily recognizes the number of electron transfers, and this electron flow is proportional to the number of glucose molecules present in the blood. Now since oxidase-based devices rely on the use of oxygen as the electron acceptor, they are subject to errors because of variations between oxygen and glucose concentrations. One way to circumvent the oxygen demand issue is to replace GOX with GDH that does not require an oxygen cofactor. We then also replace the oxygen with a synthetic electron acceptor, which is able to shuttle electrons to the electrode. So on the slide here, we see the reactions for such mediators. And here's another diagram showing the difference between using a GOX and GDH enzymes. Recall that there are two types of glucose sensors, blood glucose sensors and continuous glucose monitors. Let's look at the difference in these. Glucose is a carbohydrate and the main source of energy for our cells. We acquire glucose from our food, which then makes its way from our digestive tract to our bloodstream and then the interstitial fluid. This is the fluid that surrounds all cells in the body. From this fluid, glucose then moves into cells. BG monitors measure the amount of glucose in your blood from a finger prick using single-use enzyme-coated test strips, while CGMs typically measure the glucose in your interstitial fluid using a filament coated in glucose-sensing enzymes. These sensors are typically inserted under your skin, most commonly on the abdomen or back of the arm, and can be used continuously for several days or weeks. Limitations Glucose sensors are not perfect. It takes a while to get comfortable with them, and they can be inaccessible for certain people. Since glucose readings will vary from the interstitial fluid and from the blood, CGM cannot replace BG readings for medical decisions and also have to be initially calibrated. CGMs are also typically more expensive. Future. The future is promising for glucose sensors, as many researchers are looking at different approaches to measuring glucose, such as optical methods. Listed here are a few companies that develop these sensors, and it is noted that the market for glucose biosensors is large and growing. So there you have it. 
That's glucose sensors. Thanks for listening.